Extreme here with my latest and final acquisition to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection. I currently have four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles statues from the 1990s movie, Bebop and Rocksteady from the latest movie, and then a quarter scale action figure of Shredder from Nika, NECA. Someone please tell me how it's pronounced. I actually did a review on the Shredder, however, I used some content from the original movie and apparently YouTube banned my video in you know every single country but Caraco. So if you live in Caraco, and, or you're Caracan, how do you pronounce that? First of all, I apologize if I'm offending you Caracans, but second of all, please enjoy my Shredder review. Extreme here with Prime 1 quarter scale splinter statue from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie remakes. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you don't know what they are, they're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And they originated in comics and cartoons way back in the day. Then in 1990s, they made a live action flick, which in my opinion was excellent and still excellent to this day. They made a couple sequels that weren't that good, and then they remade them in 2014-ish, right there, and they had a, two movies. And this Splinter is from those movies because they, no one's, to my knowledge, ever made a statue of the original Splinter from the 1990s movie. And he was kind of frail and weird anyway, and he didn't really seem, he seemed very wise, but that was about it. But somehow he still beat Shredder with nunchucks. That scene never made sense to me. but. Purchased him to round out my collection. I'm going to show you pictures in a little bit, not yet for specific reasons. Prime One, I bought him during their May 2019 summer sale and I got economy shipping. So I was $300 all in to get him brand new from Prime One. He is a discounted piece for a few reasons. Um, he's not one of Prime One's best pieces, which we're, you're going to find out pretty quick but he's my best option for a splinter. And in the display case, there's an open spot and let's round it off with a Splinter. Uh, Splinter, if you don't know who he is, he uh, is a old mutant ninja rat. But that doesn't sound as cool as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. He's essentially the father figure and teacher of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Prime One made 500 of these. I think original retail was right around $500 or so. But, uh, so yeah, I, I think I got him for a steal. Uh, that's why I ended up getting him. Dimensions on him is, he's 12 by 12 inches by about 18 inches tall. For exact measurements, go to Prime One's website. Standard Prime One box, two layers of foam. The bottom base is one part. The top base is another. His tail is another, and believe it or not, it actually connects way up here. So that's very interesting. So you gotta guide it in just right. That's what she said. And then Splinter himself is one piece. So fairly easy assembly other than the tail aspect of it. There is one thing we, which we will talk about in uh, concept and design, more with the design uh, as far as the statue going on. That actually is gonna affect the display space. But so overall, I'm decently happy with him. Um, like I said, when we jump into the paint and sculpt, he's not the best, and I'm not a huge fan of this version of Splinter, but I don't know a better version. I, I think someone should make a comic version uh, of the original. And there may be a statue out there I don't know about, so if there is, please let me know. But now let's just talk about the concept and design. So first of all, conceptually, I think they did hit a lot of points for this uh, Splinter but I think they missed a lot too. First of all, I think they're really showcasing his intellectual knowledge. That's why he is on a, a platform that is made of books. So that's really cool, that's understandable. It really showcases how wise he is. And then moving up, it's kind of like a dojo floor that he's sitting on and he's standing there and it looks like he's about to you know, pull a slot machine or something like that with no expression on his face. I think this is where they failed. First of all, I don't know what he's supposed to do with his hands. 
Second of all, in these movies, he was extremely dynamic. He kicked ass, and they're not showcasing that in any way, shape, or form. So I think that is a miss on the concept. Um, but it's just interesting how they, they, they chose to do it. And I'm guessing that's why they had to sell this guy so cheap and there's still some left. Uh, not only was the movies not very popular, even though they were decent, but they just, they missed the concept, they missed the design. Some of the things on the paint and sculpt on Splinter are really good. The base, not so much, which we will talk about. But regarding design, one really interesting thing here. So the base is pretty wide and I don't think the base will fit in my display. So I'm gonna try it, and if so, I will keep the base because it elevates him a little bit, but if not, I'm gonna display him like this. I know for sure this will fit. And the nice thing when we talk about the paint and sculpt, the base isn't the greatest. It's, it's not bad, but it's not as good as Splinter and it's not typical Prime 1. So I'm going to show you guys a picture of my turtle setup right here and I don't know if I got the base in or not because I'm going to take the picture so ready for some time travel. Here it is right here. So again I don't know if I have him on the base or not. But this is inside of a Magicase Max 140. And on top of that is the rest of my uh, childhood memories. So I have Thundercats, Masters of the Universe, and G.I. Joe. So the other thing with design, with his tail, he actually doesn't sit flush all the way. There's a little little tiny gap. It's not big, but it's, it's there if you look. So a couple design misses. There are no seams or anything because he's all one piece and thankfully no shipping issues. So they did pack him really well, which is nice. And on an interesting note, I didn't even get a shipping notification for him. So he just showed up. Um, let's talk about the paint and sculpt on here. And as I said, there is definitely some opportunity on the base. And I don't really want to say there's opportunity on the paint and sculpt on Splinter himself. I think he's just not the greatest character and he's a tough one to do. So starting at the bottom where the books are, the books look okay. I do, I do like the fact they used a whole myriad of colors and some of the books you see the spines, some of them you see the pages. And it's not repeating so it's different on every single side. And all the pages, you know, they're different shades of white too. Some are more weathered than others. So they were definitely very, very intentional. And I do appreciate that, but they just look okay. Not the typical one-third prime one that you're just used to, you know, being blown away by. But what I'm not a fan of is this uh, bamboo wooden floor. So I think they chose the wrong colors. I think it's too red. I think the the sculpt on it is not good. I think they they totally missed out there's the texture is almost it just it's not a typical wooden floor and it doesn't look weathered and the sides of it don't look good either I mean they could have done so much more especially Prime 1 who is really really good at what they're doing they, they totally miss this base and then as I said Splinter especially his clothes are, are really really good good sculpt good paint his skin is a little weird, but he's a rat. And I actually have seen rats up close uh, for experimental reasons, not like personal weird shit, but, uh, sorry, but I was seeing a paint flaw. And this doesn't really look like a rat. So with that being said, let's dive in. So starting at his tail here, it's very interesting looking. It really looks aged. It uh, looks worn and he used this a lot in the movie to fight, but I'm not sure if I like the colors on it. And it, the sculpt on it is strange too. I think it's, they tried too much to look like a rat where a rat's tail is actually a little smoother than this. It does have a lot of texture. And you're gonna see that elsewhere. Another miss I think they had is you can barely see his toenails and his feet. And I do like how they have, uh, you know, his fifth digit coming out of the side. 
but it just looks weird and the paint job looks weird on them as well and the skin texture is a, is a little bit off to me his sandals look really cool though they are very movie accurate you can't really see a lot of them especially unless you're really digging in here so i do appreciate that they tried to add detail on places that really aren't that important and then his uh dress that he's wearing very faded kind of this puke color green like you see in old houses and worn just like he is you know at the bottom you have rips and tears and there's these black streaks running through it but it flows well especially with the statue kind of drapes down like it would not bad and then i want to look at uh his front here so he has this uh, belt his black belt ninja belt tied up and again it looks dirty as well not like statue dirty but painted dirty and then his dress slash robe as you move up uh, looks a little better. He has this undershirt with uh, kind of some uh, texture on it. And he has a mixed media necklace hanging down. And then I'll look at his outer robe or gi or whatever this is. This looks really great. I love the texture on it. I love the folds. I love how it's draped. Uh, I like the black paint. He has his ninja symbol on the back. Or his Japanese symbol or whatever that is. How it's flowing down by the arms. Looks great. His hands, um, very similar to his feet. I don't know if I like them. I don't like the different color texturation, even though it may be movie accurate. Very, very long fingernails. And then some of the uh, things he had on his feet and his sandals, these kind of cloth bandages wrapped around his hand. I'm not sure the point of those, but he did have them in the movie too. And then here's his portrait. So a couple things going on. First, I think the hair on the top and the sideburns looks good. But it looks like they did something completely different with uh, his mustache and beard that are hanging down. I wish it would have had more strands in it like the uh, top did. So I think that was a miss. His nose is way too shiny. Looks a little cheap, plasticky. He has these uh, crazy looking black eyes. And then again, that skin discoloration all over the place. Uh, I'm just not a fan of it. But it may very well may be movie accurate, so. So that's it. So it's a Prime 1 statue. It's not as good as they usually are, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. So, I mean, uh, some of their quarter scales are now going for five times the price of this. So. Uh, I'm really happy I got them though. Gonna uh, complete the collection here. Um, if someone ever makes a custom one, I might uh, go in on that if that looks better. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this piece. Let me know uh, what turtle movies you like best uh, if you've seen both of them, uh, the first ones. So either the first one in 1990 or the first one in 2014 or whatever that is. Also, as a reminder, I do have Ninja Turtle statues from the uh, newer movies and that's still my 5k giveaway so uh, winner pays shipping but I'm gonna give away four uh, statues to one person so really appreciate you guys watching if you haven't subscribed please give me a subscribe uh, please give me a like it helps the visibility of this even though not a lot of people are looking for him so I really appreciate it take care